I now give the floor to His Excellency Lejeune Mbella Mbella, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Cameroon. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of His Excellency Paul Bia, President of the Republic of Cameroon, allow me, first of all, Mr. President, to ask you to pass on to the President our sincere and warm congratulations upon her election to the presidency of the 73rd session of the General Assembly. This is an historic moment, given that you are the fourth woman to assume the presidency of this assembly in 73 years during which the United Nations has existed. Your diplomatic uh, the diplomatic career and knowledge of the United Nations system of the President are, I am sure, a guarantee that the President will successfully accomplish her role. In the same vein, I would like to express my gratitude to her predecessor, Mr. Miroslav Lychak, who has made a dazzling contribution to advancing the values of our shared home. Allow me also to congratulate Mr. Antonio Gutierrez, United Nations Secretary General, for his commitment to accomplishing the delicate missions bestowed upon him by the Charter and also for his efforts to conduct reforms which aim to create a more effective United Nations, one which is human and development focused. Mr. President, my delegation welcomes the theme that the President chose for this session, namely making the United Nations relevant to all people. Global leadership and shared responsibilities for peaceful, equitable, and sustainable societies. Persistent hotbeds of tension, notably in Africa and the Middle East, and the emergence of new issues such as terrorism, violent extremism, migration, natural disasters, and climate change among many others, shake the very foundations of our civilization and bring to the forefront the issue of the United Nations' ability to provide appropriate responses to the problems of the age. The expanding scope of global public goods also makes it more vital than ever that we have a United Nations which is able, to paraphrase the Charter, to be a centre for harmonising the actions of nations in the attainment of common ends. The growing complexity of the problems of the modern world, as well as the unprecedented interdependence of nations and peoples, requires collective action and global solutions. The UN is today the best reflection and embodiment of multilateralism, which more now than in the past is the most appropriate way to address the challenges that humanity faces in this day and age. It is the very essence of our organization, which, it stands repeating, was created to spare future generations from war 
and also to advance social progress and ensure better living conditions for all peoples. To achieve this, my country is of the view that the role and the future of the United Nations continues to depend on the will of member states to reaffirm its legitimacy and also to reaffirm its democratization and its representativeness so that no one is left behind. This has to involve the reform of its organs, including our Security Council. Here, we cannot continue to marginalize Africa, which continues to be the only continent that does not have a permanent seat within the primary body responsible for international peace and security. Among other things, the role and the future of the UN depend on the equitable treatment of its three pillars, namely international peace and security, development and human rights. We must not lose sight of the fact that at the heart of the objectives of the organization is the human being and the well-being of human beings depend on living conditions, the complex relationship between peace, development and human rights means that we can envisage the eradication of poverty and the improvement of the living standards of populations because this is the most reliable way to establish lasting peace, the best possible protection for the individual and viable democracy. As President Bia stated a few years ago, democracy without development is a delusion, one that gives rise to grave disappointment. Mr. President, over the last few months, the news has been marked by moving images of men, women and children who have lost their lives whilst trying to cross seas and borders in search of a better future. This is a question to which we cannot turn a blind eye. In the framework of the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, which will be adopted at the Intergovernmental Conference in December this year in Morocco, we cannot ignore the fact that poverty, unemployment, falling purchasing power and essentially uncertain futures are all impingements upon human dignity and as a result they shatter peace and they cause political instability and they drive migration and if nothing is done this migration will be neither safe nor orderly nor regular. The question of migratory flows should therefore beg the question of our collective conscience and above all remind us of the importance of effective solidarity and shared prosperity. Turning to collective security, we remain convinced that the settlement of international disputes or internal conflicts must continue to conform with the principles of the Charter. What's more, for Cameroon, our efforts on disarmament need to be intensified. Here, Cameroon feels that the attention and resources allocated to the question of nuclear and chemical weapons should not overshadow the centrality of the problem posed by small arms and light weapons on the international agenda. It must be noted that according to available statistics, more than 90% of the victims of war around the world, in particular in Africa, are killed by this type of weapon. What's more, small arms and light weapons 
are increasingly falling into the hands of terrorist groups such as Islamic State, Akim, Boko Haram and others. Cameroon is pleased to have been able to host in Yaoundé from the 11th to the 13th of June 2018 the first conference of the state parties and signatories to the Central African Convention for the Control of Small Arms and Light Weapons, their ammunition, parts and components that can be used for their manufacture, repair or assembly. Under my country's leadership, which holds the biannual presidency of this first conference, the states of Central Africa committed unreservedly to combat the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in all of the states' parties to the Kinshasa Convention. And this by mobilizing, the, uh, mobilizing sufficient institutional and logistical operational resources. The states of Central Africa intend amongst themselves and with other partners, including the United Nations, to strengthen cooperation, coordination, and the pooling and interoperability of resources for, for the effective implementation of the Kinshasa Convention in the fight against the illicit trade in small arms and light weapons. Cameroon knows that it can count on the support of the United Nations and the Secretary General. Mr. President, turning to the global economic situation, in spite of signs of recovery, growth in many regions continues to be below the level needed to achieve rapid progress towards achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. It is thus necessary to intensify net international financial flows going towards developing countries. These have actually fallen in the last few years. Let us be under no illusion. Honouring existing commitments for ODA will not in and of itself be enough to meet the funding needs of the SDGs. Therefore, it is essential to fully mobilize at every level the implementation resources identified in the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda, as well as in the Addis Ababa Action Agenda on finan Financing for Development. Mr. President, here I should like to underscore the need to transform the economic structure of the majority of African economies which focus economic activity in the extractive industries and commodities production. Due to the limited impact from other sectors and production patterns that generate few jobs, these promote inequality and also sow the seeds of social unrest. The solution is therefore to transform African economies through, among other things, industrialization and economic diversification. It is therefore more vital than ever to provide heightened support to African countries to help them alleviate the debt burden, to improve their production capacities, and lastly, to help their products reach global markets in favourable conditions. As for the specific case of international trade, it continues to face the threats of protectionism and the most appropriate solution, in our view, to this problem is to establish a universal multilateral trading system based on rules that are open, transparent, predictable, inclusive non-discriminatory and equitable in accordance with the development goals. Mr. President, Cameroon is aware of its responsibilities in the current context. The challenge of collective prosperity in my country 
requires the adoption of ambitious and realistic development policies and programs, and it also requires an instilling of democratic values in our social and political life, as well as by putting good governance and the fight against corruption at the top of our agenda. On the economic front, more specifically, my country has doggedly pursued the development of productive sectors, which are both uh, structural and promising forward-looking ones, Without this, we cannot hope to improve the living conditions of the population. This is an embodiment of our long-term vision, the aim of which is, according to the political agenda of President Paul Bia, to make Cameroon an emerging country by 2035. On the environmental front, my country, which was among the first states to ratify the Paris Agreement, remains firmly committed to the preservation of biodiversity, to preserve the climate balance of the planet, Cameroon, which is a country in the Congo Basin and the country with the second largest forests in Africa, took the brave decision to not make full use of its forests. In this respect, urgent and Appropriate solutions need to be found to reconcile environmental preservation initiatives that have been adopted by Cameroon in the interests of everyone and also the legitimate aspirations of its population for prosperity and well-being. Along the same lines, Cameroon would like to reiterate here the need for a host of urgent actions for the conservation of Lake Chad which has today been reduced by more than 90% of its initial surface area. This is a question of life and death for the coastal populations whose livelihoods depend on preserving this body of water. Cameroon would like to take this opportunity to express its sincere gratitude to donors, international donors, who, in a burst of solidarity during the donor conference held at the beginning of September 2018, granted 1.5 billion euros to this cause. Mr. President, on the subject of the democratic process in my country, we have moved to improve our electoral system, not only by strengthening the mechanisms involved in organizing elections, but also through legislative and regulatory measures which aim to ensure high turnout in forthcoming elections and votes, including the upcoming presidential election on the 7th of October. The consolidation of democratic culture in Cameroon is an unstoppable process in spite of the security challenges that we face. Thanks to the sacrifices made by the entire Cameroonian nation, combined with efforts coordinated with our neighbours in the Lake Chad Basin and the support of our international partners, the spoiler capacity and the capacity to do harm of the terrorist sect Boko Haram has been considerably reduced, although we must remain mobilized until it is completely eradicated. In the regions of the northwest and the southwest, the government remains determined to stabilize the socio-political situation there. The corporatist claims of the teachers and lawyers unions, which lie at the heart of this situation, have continued to be subject to negotiations with these social and professional groups. Solutions which sometimes go beyond the initial problems raised have been found. Unfortunately, Mr. President, and Cameroon wishes to say this from this rostrum, some individuals that are ruthless and lawless have tried to transform these socio-professional concerns into demands for secession, 
which aim to break up the state without any regard for constitutional and democratic mechanisms. Having taken as their modus operandi the perpetration of terrorist acts, armed gangs are setting light to schools and hospitals, violating the right to education of children by preventing them from going to school, kidnapping and assassinating those working for the administration, the defense and security forces, and the traditional authorities, as well as any citizen that does not subscribe to their destructive ideology. To date, nearly a hundred officers of the law and order forces of our country have lost their lives, and that is without counting, of course, the many families that have been left in grief and mourning by these barbaric acts. The current situation is deteriorating the economic fabric and also the school and health systems in these two regions. This picture is compounded by population displacements within the country and also towards Nigeria, a neighbouring country and our dear friend. Mr President, in light of the aforementioned, the government is working to restore peace and security in the two regions with respect for human rights and the laws and rules of the Republic. What's more, being sensitive to the fate of the concerned populations, the President of the Republic, His Excellency Paul Beer, has decided, and decided on the 21st of June, to implement an emergency humanitarian assistance plan for the two regions, with a provisional budget, of 12.7 billion CFA francs. The funds allocated to this plan have been supplemented by financing coming from a remarkable show of solidarity and generosity from all of the other regions and every strata of the population of Cameroon. Mr. President, Cameroon, a ward of the United Nations, invites this assembly, as well as all of the peace and justice-loving states and peoples that are friends of Cameroon, to support it in mobilizing resources for the implementation of this humanitarian plan, so as to provide better assistance to these populations. The government would like to express its gratitude to our partners who, from the very launch of this plan, spontaneously provided their support. In any case, the government of Cameroon would like to reaffirm its dedication to peace, stability and to taking into account the concerns of the population. Mr. President, on many occasions, and we restate it again here today, we have shown our openness to dialogue, but in strict respect for the institutions and laws of the Republic. Robust measures have already been taken to remedy this situation. For example, the creation of the National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism, as well as a ministry, a fully-fledged ministry, responsible for decentralization. The aim is to accelerate the management of local affairs by the populations that this concerns themselves. Mr. President, the government of Cameroon would like to reiterate its unshakable commitment to guaranteeing both the security of persons and property as well as the unity and territory integri territorial integrity of the nation. Here, the government welcomes the fact that the entire people of Cameroon and above all the populations of these two regions have rejected any attempt at secession. To conclude, Mr. President, Cameroon, a country whose independence was conducted and guided by the United Nations, would like to restate here not only its faith in our organization but also its attachment to peace and stability. These are resources without which no development is possible. Thank you for your kind attention.
I thank the, uh, the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Cameroon for his statement.